I guess I've always felt comfortable behind a microphone. At five years old, my brother and I were using a toy megaphone, putting it in our bedroom window to entertain the neighbors. By fourth grade, I was reading the morning announcements over the PA. It's really no surprise why all of this interested me. And the Boston Red Sox once again proved that they will not play dead dog for anybody. My dad was a broadcaster from the Berkshires to Boston, and he seemed to be having a pretty good time, whether he was covering Ted Kennedy's election to the Senate in 62 or hanging with the 67 Impossible Dream Red Sox. He always said it beat working for a living. I got my feet wet in college with a gig I would gladly have done the rest of my life as a DJ at WUNH in Durham. But it was clear nobody was going to pay me to play only records that I liked. So I got serious and hired on as a news writer for the nightly newscast at New Hampshire Public Television and soon elbowed my way onto the broadcast. The Ralph Cox Traveling Goal Scoring Show went on the road last night. Since this was PBS, I probably should have had a pledge drive to pay for a haircut. They let me do sports casts and features only, correctly determining that I looked too young to be taken seriously reading the news. I went searching for a full-time spot, and in late 1979, the people at the main broadcasting system, WCSH in Portland and WLBZ in Bangor, took a chance. The concept lives on today in the military reserves and in the National Guard. The main Army National Guard is now in the middle of its annual training exercises. Channel 2 in Bangor turned out to be the perfect place for me. I was surrounded by really talented people who threw me in the deep end and made sure I didn't sink. We were working with 16 millimeter film, which takes time to process, so that deadline pressure forced me to be aggressive about getting what I needed. What are you anticipating here in Maine, sir? Well, I haven't talked to our people yet, but what I would like to do is win, just like we're going to do in Pennsylvania. How important is this we can? How important is Maine? Very. Can Reagan be stopped? Yes. Live, Pat Callahan, Bill Green Sports, Kevin Mannix with the weather, and the News Center team. This is the Weekend Report. Not a great day for a couple of our favorite teams, but Bill Green, the Celtics at least made a better effort today. Three years later, I moved to Channel 6 in Portland. In 1986, I talked the news director into sending me to Florida for what looked to be a feel-good story. I don't think any teacher has ever been more ready to have two lessons in my life. Krista Corrigan McAuliffe, a teacher from my hometown, was going into space. Our families belonged to the same parish in Framingham. As the launch kept getting delayed, there were warning signs. Uh, Pat, have we ever had a launch in that temperature range? No, I am told that they have had some cold weather launches, but never have they launched one in any sub-freezing temperatures. By this time, the broadcast networks no longer cut into programming to show NASA launches. But we carried the Challenger launch live with Patsy Wiggins in the studio and me on the phone in the press grandstand, shivering from cold and anticipation. Pat, there's obviously something wrong here, we're not sure. Flight dynamics officer that the vehicle has exploded. We stayed on the air for nearly 45 minutes before NBC took over. Uh, the, the vehicle has exploded and uh, there's nothing that can be seen by the naked eye from here. It's many miles away. The NASA officials have decided there will be no more shuttle missions until they find out what happened here today. A special commission has been appointed. Two presidents make history in Kennebunkport. President George Bush greets French President Francois Mitterrand as two world leaders meet in Maine for the first time. Good evening, everyone. I'm Pat Callahan reporting live in Kennebunkport near the President's Walker's Point estate. The late 80s were a great time to cover politics in Maine. Our most famous summer resident was in the White House, and George Mitchell became Senate Majority Leader and reached out to the new president. That it is a welcome sign of your good judgment that you have chosen to live in Maine even though you didn't have the good fortune to be born there. <laughs> Having the nation's two most powerful politicians in Maine made all politics local for us. You have to sit over there? Yeah, Pat Callahan, Channel okay. 6 in Portland. Nice to you. Also in our backyard, the New Hampshire primary. For me, the Olympics of politics. If I were to win in Maine, it would have a major, major effect, I think, on broadening my appeal and helping me to go south and win because no one would expect it. But obviously, as you say, I was at 3%. Governor Bush was at 61. We've come a long way, and I'm very pleased at the progress. Has there been some change in the, in the electoral math in this state? Oh, I think so. No one will come to a Bush administration to profit 
only to serve. One of the biggest employers in Maine is Bath Iron Works. Uh, some people say the U.S. Navy is too small. Some say it's too big and we shouldn't spend so much on ships. What do you say? Well, I want us, uh, look, we have to rebuild our military. Our military and when the winners of that big prize want to reach uh, the people of Maine, we're always ready to listen. Do you think there will be an increase as the, as the winter moves on? We're going to work with the Maine delegation to assure that Folks aren't turning their thermostats down to 50. I've been lucky to have a front row seat as Maine politicians take the national and world stages. 60% of the people consider themselves British, and 40% of the people consider themselves Irish, and that's the nub of the problem. I was in Belfast, Northern Ireland, when George Mitchell was chairing the multi-party talks looking to end a centuries-old conflict. And we looked into what was at the heart of it. Does peace mean unification? Well, peace means an agreement between the people of this island. President Bill Clinton, a Democrat, tapped Maine senior senator, Republican Bill Cohen, to become Secretary of Defense. Uh, when pressed by reporters about possible friction between he and Cohen, the president said only that he admires Cohen's creative independence. Senator Senators Olympia Snow and Susan Collins also played a major role in the Clinton administration. Both of these Republicans voted to acquit Clinton when he was impeached. Now tomorrow night on News Center we'll tell you much more about the, uh, the role that our U.S. Senators are playing. You know they say it's an ill wind that blows no good and there's certainly an ill wind blowing around the Capitol tonight. Much of this job is serious business. We haven't solved homelessness. But chronic homelessness, I, I think we're, we've come as close as, as anyone out there right now. Could Maine attack chronic homelessness the way Utah did? More than a quarter century later, the Androscoggin is alive and thriving. There are still problems with pollution. And how do we protect our environment? It must but sometimes it's just for fun. What keeps you doing it? Uh, creative people don't really retire. You know, you always have an idea, you want to do something. You Try something, you want to keep going and keep learning. Have you ever spent time in Maine? Yes, I spent summers in Maine uh, as, a, as, a camp, uh, as a camper and, and as a camp counselor. This was just a lightning trip into Portland, but Yoko says she and John once visited Maine and looked into buying a house here. The houses that we looked um, were a little bit too large for uh, what we were thinking. Sir Muhammad Ali is not the man he once was, but his aura and presence are unmistakable, even for young people who never saw him fight. Would you like to see some of that come out legitimately now that you've settled your royalties problem? But there are some things. There's some tapes from the BBC in London that we did, which are kind of terrific. Now guys, I, d I don't even really know what to say about what we just saw. Don't say anything. Just enjoy. <laughs> That's all you need to say. I mean, oh, oh, my oh my goodness. For all of that, the true lasting legacy is being part of a special news team. This is WCSH News Center 6 with Pat Callahan, Cindy Williams, meteorologist Joe Cupo, and Bruce Glazier with sports. In January of 1990, Cindy Williams came to the 6 p.m. anchor desk, joining me and longtime stalwarts Bruce Glazier and meteorologist Joe Cupo. It's been 20 years since Pat, Joe, Bruce, and I became an anchor team. It was an extraordinary run and a wonderful one for us. That four-person anchor team stayed together for 22 years, rated number one the entire time until Bruce retired. And Joe left the station a few years later. As for Cindy and me, welcome back to our special News Center coverage of the Acadia National Park Centennial. Well, we're still together, 31 years and counting. I'm Cindy Williams, he's Pat Callahan, yeah. we're here at Schooner Head. Turns out, Dad was right. This really does beat working for a living. There's so many votes to count. That's going to do it for News Center Maine at 11. We're back with updates each half hour. Return you now to NBC News.